tell us a little bit about yourself, um, just your background, and um, just your, your story of coming to the Lord. Um, what was that like? Did you, did you, were you raised in the Christian household? Okay, so actually, I was, was raised Catholic. Okay. Um, it was kind of one of those, um, you know, re religion by association type of things. Um, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't really like me knowing what I believed at the time, if that makes sense. Um, it was more so like, hey, uh, you know, my mom goes to the Catholic Church I, ever since I can remember. I've been in the Catholic Church and you just, and, and at some point, I didn't even know for so long, I've been for so long at such an age. I didn't even know what we were in the sense that, like, I would hear something, like, if I go to school, people would say, like, yeah, I'm Christian. And then I would say, I'm Catholic. And then, you know, or, and then I would hear someone say, maybe, like, that's the same thing. And I'm like, it is? You know, like, what? But then I had like, like other family members who were quote unquote Christian, and that was different than what my church was okay. like, being half of that. It was different. It was different in the sense of how, and you know, we would really try to go to churches for more so like events and stuff, not actually sermons and things like that, but actual like events and things. It just seemed a little different that they did, that they did things. And so I always had in my mind kind of started to think, like I started to wonder, are those things different or are they the same? Okay. You know, so I didn't really, that's what I mean when I say I didn't really know what I was until I asked mom, she said, yeah, we're Catholic, you know, we're, we're very yeah. much so Catholic, that's what we are, you know, and, you know, and, it, and then I, I kind of started to learn that the Christianity was the umbrella that Catholicism was underneath. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Do I believe that today? I you know what it looks like. I, I have my ideas what it actually, what Catholicism and Christianity is, but, you know, I'll leave it at that for now. Would you say was the age frame of that initial Catholicism exposure for you from what time to what time? Well, I can say that it probably ended early, early in high school for me. Okay. Um, because that's when I started to. That's when God intervened in a way that. Um, well, to keep it short, to say it for lack of a better word, that's when I think. Um, okay. So that's when I would say that God really kind of came into the picture, like Christ Himself, like. Like came into the picture and I was able okay. to start to see like, oh, okay, there, there's a, there's a difference here. Something, something is different between the church that I'm going to and what my mother believes and tells me that I, I ought to believe versus what I'm, I've experienced. What were some of those things, just for context, what were some of the main difference that you noticed between the church that you and your mom was going to and just the new church that you were being exposed to in that transition? Religion. Um, I think there's a scripture that talks about what true and true religion is to God. And I noticed more traditions of men okay. in the Catholic Church. Um, I, I can use that for exactly, but I know what it is now to say. I noticed sure. more traditions of men in the church and cultural tradition versus the actual preaching and the actual understanding and the actual follow through and responsibility of. Who Christ is, what He did for us, and what that looks like in our lives, and how we ought to kind of follow through with that. So, you know, I was seeing that difference in the church, and I, I really got to hear. It was basically my first real altar call, and I think another thing that might have contributed to it at the time because I was so young was probably the language. Like, they were speaking a different language in my mother's church, and you know, her church was speaking English, which is something that, even though it's not my first language, if you believe it or not. Um, it's not necessarily my first language, but it was the language that I was more accustomed to. And so that was another factor that kind of contributed to just the differences and and how God was able to reach me. Like he, he was talking my language, he used something that I love, something that I had passion for, which was my, my niece, which was a child, which was children. And then, you know, he just kind of really gave me the you know the gospel for, you know, for God's love of the world that he gave only God's son that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life and you know, and talk about they talk about repentance. You know, not just that God so loved the world, but that you also need to recognize that you're a sinner and repent of your sin. Mm -hmm. And that that struck like the chords in my heart because I was like, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I grew up with all these rules, and honestly, like, I would consider myself a good girl. Like I had my little my little hidden things that I dealt with. You know, but it wasn't to the point. It wasn't to the point where it was something that could be outwardly or that seems to. You know, you, you get what I'm saying. And so. I had moments like that um, in my life, and so that that altar call was a really big one for me because I was like, God is really—he wants me. He wants my attention. He wants me to give my life to Him. He wants me 
to understand that the threat that I'm doing for a crawl is, is it, that's it, that isn't it. And there is something past this life, you know? Um, and so, and I think I was um, in high school at the time. I was, I was in high school at the time when this happened because I remember going back. Okay. Um, but prior to that, I met, I met your best friend. Um, I met your best friend before this all happened. It's so funny how God orchestrated this because I met him before this happened, and he so happened to be a young man that was in falling in love with God, that's and that's he great. was sharing whoever, wherever about who God was, about repentance. And at that time, I was like, I couldn't even hear him because I was upset with my best friend for even having him be with us because. I would get into my mother was so strict, you know, she's Catholic and she was just this strict, you know, Caribbean woman and she was from boys. Yeah, I was not allowed <laughs> to be around boys like that. And so and, and then maybe there, there's more reason for it for that. But um as far as I know, I wasn't allowed to be around boys. Okay. And so <laughs> when that, you know, when that whole thing happened, I, I wasn't really in the head to hear what this young man was saying about God, you know, and, and repent and all this. Like, I wasn't able to hear about that. He was trying to get to know me and I was like, are you trying to run some game? What's happening? What's happening here? I don't want to hear this. You know, I just want to get home and not get in trouble. <laughs> you know, so that was my that was my like my main concern. And then right, right. you know, like maybe fast forward a little bit, not that far off, but I can't tell you the time that was so long ago, of course, of years course. ago, a decade ago. Um that, you know, God got my attention through my niece's reading. And I, you know, and it's funny because I the altar call happened. But there was something wrestling within me. I did not go to the altar call that there was there were people there and I think I have this, I can have this shy thing about me. I can have this like, I don't want to call it anxiety, um, but maybe. <laughs> um it's just it was just something in me that was like it was, it was just a very I felt like it was tearing me apart. Wow. You know, wow. it, it was pulling me like you like if you could imagine having your two arms being pulled in two different directions, mm -hmm. but it, it, it goes deep into your heart, that feeling of your heart and your heart aching. It's, it's, it's having that feeling. Um, my heart ached when that was going to happen. But, but I decided to, you know, self-preservation at that time, safe days and not go to the altar and put all those people. <laughs> that was you who crying. I was, I, I heard the love of God. I heard what he done for us. I heard what he wanted wow. from me. And I was, I was in tears, not bubbles, everything. And I, it's so funny because I looked next to me and my cousin was there. She was also crying oh. like that. And, and, and I was like, where are you from in the Christian church? Like in my mind, I was like, you know all this stuff. And yeah, I don't. And she's older than me too, like by a good amount of years, maybe five or seven years. And um, so, you know, it was an experience. And But I didn't, it, it was an experience that gnawed at me in the sense that oh. later, not that much later, because it was, a, I think, a weekend. I went to school like maybe a few days after. Um, and then... Um, I found that young man. I found that young man who's talking about God, and I, I had some wow. questions for him. And you know, we got to talking, and you know, I walked home from school one day after a couple of days of talking. He was very forward, and he asked me after doing I think that we were doing now, um, or he was doing ways in that time. Yeah, you know, we yeah. were running and growing. Um, and so, and then the semester prior, we know that that, that doesn't save, but that yeah. was also something that he utilized to say, you know, hey, are you? Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to give yeah. your life to Christ? And, and then you also allow the space to say, like, you don't have to do this with me right now, um, but this is a prayer, um, and this is the understanding behind the prayer. So whenever you are, you know, behind closed doors in your bedroom, you just want to give your life to Christ, you know, I share that with you. And, and that's what you did. And so I was ready. And I just, you know, I was that's like, incredible. I was a little afraid, but I was ready in the sense that I was like, honestly, if there's something more to this life, especially after death, I want to make sure that I'm, not just the good girl, but I'm I'm the well done and faithful servant girl who yeah. was able to, you know, understand who Christ was, understand the nature of God and what he had done for us and recognize that through my life and through honoring him with my life. And, and I, I wanted to do that. And so I did that prayer right in there one day walking to school with him and he graduated, gave me resources, he, you know, he also connected me to other women. And um, for girls, we weren't going to have to talk. You know, he connected me to other girls who, you know, could um, can kind of like disciple me in a sense, you know, because he was off the sex, he was a little wary of that. Of course, of course. Um, so he connected me to other girls who could disciple me. But I, I honestly, I had a, I wasn't very social in the sense, like not antisocial, like if somebody walked to me and talked to me, I, I would 
you know, like people I talk to them, but I didn't really search out those relationships so much because I, again, I had a really great mother. I wasn't allowed to have friends. Um, I wasn't allowed to be around boys. Like people couldn't come to my house after school and hang out. I had one friend that I made in middle school and that was the only friend she allowed me to have. And I just kind of took that and was like, hey, I'm going to take what I can get, okay? Um, but uh, it didn't matter because a part of me was just that little girl who just, you know, she'd be in a room, she'd no TV, she'd read a book, you know, she'd dance, she'd sing, you know? So I was, I was that type of, but like in public, not so much. She, you're not going to catch me dancing too much in public. I woke up and by the grace of God, sure. you know, but, um, you know, that was a little bit about, you know, my personality and how that was. And so I kind of stuck to him a little bit more in the sense of receiving a discipleship. Um, but he set very clear boundaries, you know, um, because it was about protecting not only his heart, but my heart as well, especially sure. as a new person coming in um, to, you know, coming into Christianity, learning what that was and learning who God was, you know. So um, that's my testimony. That, that's where it ends. There's no major, um, well, I won't say that's where it ends because I'm sure God has, um, I know that God has done some more things throughout my life that I can add to my testimony, but that's what I'm here today. Okay. <laughs> so that's. Um, that's, but that's what my testimony is. And that's how God really, you know, and I hope that answers your question. You know, that's how God really kind of, you know, got my attention and saved me and surprised me by the love. He surprised me by use, by using what I love to get to my attention. Yeah. Right. Cause it wasn't going to be that way. I was afraid. Okay. It wasn't yeah. going to be him. So he used what I love to get me to, to see who he was and that he loved me and that he wanted me to repent and be saved from my sins. In what ways would you say that? That conversation or that initial sharing and you surrendering your life to the Lord, in what way has that transformed your life? It definitely has opened me up more in the sense that, like, in socializing a little bit more um, mm-hmm. and not being so anxious or afraid of talking to people about Him. Okay. Um, and I think before. Like that type of conversation would have been hard to have with anyone, whether they were trying to talk to me about it or I was trying to talk to them about it, because it wasn't something I was really, I really understood or was familiar with, him, if that if that makes sense. Um, and he's made me a little bit more outgoing. I still have a reserve. I still have like my sure. my privacy things. I do, but he's he's put me out there a little bit in situations where I had to. You know, he was just like, I want you to talk to this person. I want you to say this to them. I want you to tell them about me. And I had to do that. <laughs> and, you know, and they, they were sometimes like me and sometimes they just were completely different. And it was very um, intimidating to kind of step up and do that. Um, so that would be the before and after. So before Christ, I was to myself. You know, I didn't really, you know, talk to anybody that much. Um, I didn't really, you know, do that as much. Um, now you'll catch me calling people and checking up on them and, you know, seeing how they're doing. Like, even though I had that best friend at the time, um, we were so young that a lot of, when I look back at it, a lot of that relationship was more her, you know, not pursuing me personally, but I guess for lack of a better word, pursuing me. Because she was the one that approached me and, and said, you know, hey, you know, can you be friends? And like, she approached me, I didn't approach her, yeah. you know? And that was kind of, that kind of happened often where, you know, kids would approach me and asked to be my friend or to clear that they were my best friend. And I didn't know how to react. So I, wasn't, I, I didn't understand it. I wasn't used to it. I wasn't allowed to, to really have it, you know? And so, um, and it's, it's to the point to, to this day, I'm still learning what friendship is according to scripture, according yeah. to what, you know, God says that, that friendship is and what true friendship is. And so, um, yeah, I, I would say that's a, a before and after. Before Christ, that friendship, that level of intimacy wasn't really there. Um, mm-hmm. That level of, you know, talking to people about um, these kind of conversations, these kind of deep, relevant, and um, important things wasn't really happening. Um, but now, these conversations are just like a part of my daily life, whether it's someone I know or not. It's, it's, it's just a part of my being, if that makes sense. Your your cousin, have you guys have conversations just about that initial invitation and her bring you to Paris when it comes? Yeah, we did actually. Um what was that like? She she was actually I don't know if she was moved by the fact that I was moved. Okay. Um, because to my understanding and, and her testimony is a very different one, kind of like the the double life type of testimony. Sure. Um because I think at some point her father was also a pastor. Um and so that was something that's like a, a whole different, you know 
Uh, Wait, PK Kids? Yeah. There's always a different story. And so, so she, um, but she was someone that was very, uh, she was very important to me and in, in my life because she yeah. was one of those people that I described before where, you know, they would babysit me, but she did more than babysit me. She formed a relationship with me. And that was different, you know, um, because like I said, I was indifferent. You know, I didn't, I didn't really know how to have those relationships. I didn't know, I didn't really form it, but she showed me within my own family, like, Hey, this is how, this is how you do it. You know? And so, um, it, which is interesting because for me, that's still, that still ties me to my, like, like this, this type of family versus how, like, I don't want to say inside or outsider type of mindset, but it, but because I was young, I, I, it became normal for me to have that within my family rather than outside of my family. And it was kind of seen like because my mother wouldn't really have it outside of my family that that was something that I needed to be cautious of. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, even though she did that, I still had my my reservations. Like I still, you know, and so um, anyway, she was someone that would you know build a relationship with me and would try to really counsel me and give me wise counsel about things in my life. With middle school, like she would try to talk to me about boys and she would try to sure. talk to me about you know my friendship. I I I can I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I didn't even know about my best friend relationship that I had sure. because at some point there was a, a type of pressure that I was feeling in that relationship um especially once I came to know who God was and it felt like a pressure that wanted to kind of pull me in the opposite direction of where God mm-hmm. wanted me to go and so um or pull not pressure but a pull same, same thing you guys get what I'm <laughs> um so yeah that was something that um that I would say with my cousin happened I I I do believe later in her life she truly got saved, mm. but she still struggles with her own demons. Like she still struggles with you know certain spirits and things because of things that, um, you know, for her and me happened in our childhood. Does that make you yeah, understand? Absolutely. So absolutely. you know that's yeah. something else too. I want to ask, what was that like for you? Were there any immediate changes that, that had to take place for you? Were there any friendships that you had to forsake? Uh, were there any boundaries that you had to create now that you were a new Christian and you were navigating what it means to be a follower of Jesus? Yeah, I definitely did um, have to set boundaries. Um, I will say I wasn't the best at the time sure. because, again, I was so young. I, I'm still learning and still growing in so many areas of my life, even now. That you know, looking back at it, I realize even more <laughs> how much I, I didn't know, or you know, and so or I didn't understand, or I didn't know how. Um, but the Word of God has helped me through to this point in my life now but back then uh one of the things i did find that i had to do was set a boundary with that friendship um and really set a boundary with sin like keep sin um not at bay but away if that makes sense and so all while also struggling with this whole goody two-shoe mindset like good girl type mindset and the rules and all the stuff that i had in the Catholic church that i kind of had to really um what is the word deconstruct um and really kind of like pull the pieces together for what was, you know, still true and actually the principles of God versus what was traditions of man and like yeah. culture. Um, and so, uh, but with that friendship in particular, um, I did, I did cut it off um, completely, which um, what that looks like is just, I had, uh, I confronted my friend about the things that I believed were different now in our lives. And I told her um, that, you know, I didn't want to continue in the relationship. You know, I, I, I think, um, that was something that needed to happen and that I did it face to face. I didn't want to do it over the phone. Um, I wanted to sit down with her, do it face to face and have a conversation with her and tell her, listen, I think our paths are going different ways. Now that was very, very early on in my walk, in my my Christian lifestyle. I, I did not realize that I could be an influence in her life hmm. and love on her and do all these things that, you know, have been done for me. And, you know, even now I, I you know, I just didn't know, yeah, just, yeah. you know, and so, um, yeah, I had to cut that. Really, I did cut that relationship off, um, but I do believe that God had that happen for a reason. Um, because later, I, I, you know, she would come back to me and she'd say, "Hey, you know, I'm going to church," and she even went to church with me a couple of times. Unfortunately, it was not the the church that I would have hoped she would have gone to. Sure. My mom had it was like, "Oh, she's going to come to church and she's going to come to the Catholic church," because my mom was still. Not she. I wasn't. I had. I was still having struggles in my life where, um, and I think there's a verse that talks about God's word coming as like a sword, um, and you know, 
there's still parts of my life where I had to fight and really get to the point of being able to grow, you know, and, and be in an environment that would allow me to grow and kind of nurture, you know, that in me and, you know, drawing to the Christ. And so, you know, I, I was able to, you know, still have my friend, you know, kind of recognize that, oh, something's different about her. Interesting. You know, so, you know, there, that's a little bit, you know, just to answer your question. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. So yeah. you were around, I say, high school age when, when these yeah, things were happening. high school age, I would say probably 16. Wow. Um, because I think you enter at the time you enter in like late, like 15 year olds, sure. like late 15. Um, so I was like maybe 16, 17 or 16 and a half or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to add because you, you said something, um, that reminded me of something else, which, um, go ahead, go ahead. my mom, I remember, you know, part of that fight, I remember saying to her, like, listen, I have been a good child to you. <laughs> I have not, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I've never done any of that. I don't go party, plus I don't speak out, which was something my friend would do, by the way. Um, and she would try to like get me to go with her. Um, I look, I don't, I don't do any of that. I've very, been very responsible all my <laughs> life. And I'm just asking you to go to a different church, you know? Like, I, it was so hard. It, it is so funny. Um, I can laugh about it now because it's my little teenager self, you know, right. kind of like stopping my foot and, you know, like, <laughs> hey. I just want to grow, you know, like crying to my mom, like little teenage girl, and you know, so it, that's something else that happened, and, and I and I'm still I'm still glad that things did play out the, the way that they did because I do think that was God just kind of writing my script, like writing my book, you know, you know what I mean. And so um, I, I I don't I don't regret it as much as I have said before. Because I think with you, I've told you before, like, man, I really wish I knew how to love her better. I really wish I knew the worst to say to kind of tell her about the nature of God, tell her about how he loves her, tell her how we are sinners and we need to repent. And, and it's so funny, I can do that. I'm doing it then. Yeah. yeah so, uh, <laughs> I'm doing it. Now. The opportunities are lost, right? As easy as this, you know. And so, um, but still, it, it was nice to see that. And I was friends with her from early on in middle school up until our beginning of high school, which is around the time I think I got saved. Okay. And so she knew, she knew me for, she knew, you know, a good amount of me. And so um, for her to recognize that she wanted to come back and say, hey, I want, and she came back a couple of times, you know, um, where she was like, hey, you know, uh, I went to church and, you know, that would have been a space and opportunity for me to say, you to church with me or, you know, and so. Yeah, I just remember doing that. And, and you know, th there was a time that my mom finally allowed me. And here's how she allowed me. Here's what's right. interesting. Was... She allowed me to go with my sister because I would be invited by the, the boy at the time. Because, you know, <laughs> he was the one that knew. Um, at first, he was just like, you know, this is a church, a great church that you can go to. Me and my mom go there. But then he was like, oh, this is ridiculous. Let's get you connected to community. Let's get you in here. Let's get you growing. You know, we, we need to kind of like get you to a home church somewhere where you can find family in Christ, you know? And so, um, so he was like, come to church with us. And my mom was not, I, no. think was, I think he was also able to drive at times. Sometimes he'd be like, far as that's how I go to church. <laughs> and so that was a whole thing for my mom. She was not having it. And <laughs> yeah, it was really funny at the time. She was really not having it. And then um, my sister found out that my sister went to that church and she invited me to go once I told her my troubles. And she's much older than me. She's like in her 30s. Sure, she's um, at, the time, at the time, yeah. And she allowed me, she allowed me the opportunity to say, like, you know, to go to go to a Christian church, like a true Christian biblical church or non-denominational church, however you want to think about it. Um, and so she uh was my ticket. <laughs> my <daughter's laughs> ticket. And I took it and because it wasn't about the boy. And I, I think that's what my mom thought. And I was like, it's not about the boy. It really wasn't. I want to go to church, you know? <laughs> Um, and so I want to learn more about this Jesus. I want to know outside of what, because because it was so for me it was so once I once my eyes like the spiritual awakening happened sure. for me, I started to just feel dead at the church where I was. I wasn't being poured into, you know, because like I said, it was a lot of rules, a lot of traditions of men, and I was like, is this it? Because this is what I'm used to. I already know that there's no life. There's mm -hmm. no life, and so um, I wanted to to go where there was life, so I could be poured into, so that I can then pour out. Um, and she didn't understand that at the time because you know she's my mom, and she knows she's, she knows that she knows best, and she you know she just didn't understand it um, because this is what she knew. And so um, and there was a very controlling thing to it as well because I'm a child, and so 
Um, so there was that whole thing. But, you know, once my sister allowed me to go to church with her, my mom said, let me go every once in a while. But even then, it's so funny because there was an older woman that found out when my mom started letting me go. Because the young adults, the young children, or young adult children and teenagers were leaving the Catholic Church very rapidly. Um, like, I would see the kids that I grew up with in the, in the Catholic Church were gone by, like, the time they were in middle school or high school. Yeah. You know, their parents would probably go or maybe they were going to a separate church with one of their parents and one of their parents was still in the Catholic Church. It was so, it was so interesting. And so by the time I was still there, it was like, where's the youth? There's no youth here, you know? Um, they were losing the, the youth in that church and they were going, they were going clubbing, they would come Easter and you would see them. Right. And you know, you know they've been up to them. <laughs> You know, Easter Christmas service, yeah, Easter yeah. Christmas mm -hmm. service, and um, you know, whatever the extra services that the Catholic Church would have, and a lot of the times your parents were forcing them to be there, you know, and so um, just like oh, mine was, but you know, and so it, it was very interesting because I was like, I I need to get somewhere where there's life, and and finally she let me have that. And this one older woman, she I remember her a little bit. She was very stern in the fact that she said, "How could you leave your mom?" and go to a different church. Because my mom also had this thing where um, you're my little girl and you're going to go where I go. She also, that was also a cultural thing, but it's also some somewhat embedded in the church. Like it kind of melded together. Like you have to be where your mother is and things like that. Your mother has to have control over your life. And that makes sense with the second part, you know, mother, your, your parent should have authority in your life, you know, and, yeah. and that, type of, that type of control in your life. Also, I do have good news though. My mother today, um, I believe it's safe. Okay. Um, she did leave the Catholic Church and okay. is going to a Christian church, and she, you know, attends regularly. She serves. She, you know, does. Hey, but... Yeah. And so, but there are still things that I notice that are very, uh, if I could say it this way, Catholic habits. There's still remnants. Yeah. Of There's still yeah. remnants. Yeah. Tradition. Uh, one yeah. of the one of them, I I, I will say, um, I'll share this a little bit. Is uh, when we pray together, when me and my mother pray together, when she wants to pray for me. She tends to recite, uh, recite something like recite a scripture, and what I mean by that is it's usually a particular scripture in a particular book. It's not the it's not different scriptures throughout the different books. Right. So you know, if we might have a verse that God puts on our hearts based sure. on we've been growing, we've been growing, she kind of takes it from the sense of the Psalms, <laughs> or you know, like something like that as an, as an example, and she'll recite the whole thing. And then pray on top of that. And it's so, so it's just like this long <laughs> Look, she has it, yeah. prayer. And I'm like, oh man, I love you. And I and I love the fact that you want to love, you know, you want to pray for me, but I think you're missing the <laughs> yeah. you know, but I, it just it's so just an example to give you to say, like, just like me, when I, I, I said earlier, um, I have things from um you were asking you asked me the question of what's different from before and after the right. like a before and after picture of like well how prices changed you. Um just like I said earlier, I have remnants of like my the culture That's and like the, the rules and stuff that sure. I had to follow that I didn't know how to kind of get out of once I got to, you know, finding out who, who got what. And, and so she's kind of, you know, been the same thing, even though it's, it's been a few years, it takes, it can take yeah, some time. It does. So. And um, so that boy, let's go back to that boy, right? So in your story, you did mention that there was initial invitations. You're you desiring to attend church service was because you really wanted to know God. You really wanted to be in an environment that was teaching the Bible. You wanted to grow in Him. And so this boy was inviting you, and the means for you to join this church really came with your older sister chaperoning. So I want to get a little bit personal and ask: At what point did um, I guess your friendship uh, with this boy uh, change into something that was more than than friendship, more than just a uh, uh, someone that's just inviting the church for you to get to know the Lord because it seems like he played a, a crucial a crucial role in you coming to the Lord. Again, he was just a servant. He was just a messenger. I put it that way. But at what point did you notice that your friendship, the nature of the friendship started to change? Honestly, it was one of the walks home from school because he started walking home from school sure. because that was that was when we could have the conversation, honestly. Um, that's when we can start talking. We can we can keep having the conversations about God. And I have questions and a lot of questions. And you know, he would try his best to answer them, to give me resources for them. Um, and so he kind of got into the habit of walking home, and that kind of helped my mom open up too, um, because she started seeing him around more. And it, it wasn't just like you know this fluke guy coming around for who knows what. Like you know, he's actually you know genuine and sincere in that, um, but wanting me to know who God was, and you know, just having a genuine like, like friendship with me. And so um, I think that helped her to open up. And I think 
one of the days that you're walking home from school, yeah. I just recognize, okay, this kid actually is different. And I, <laughs> I said earlier that I've been indifferent a little bit about just not life, but you know, relationships. And that didn't stop at friendships. It actually, I was indifferent about romantic relationships today. And, and I think part of that is because I was just, I was so young, you know, like, what do I, what do I need to be thinking about? It? I, were, I was fair. thinking about certain things though, that I had no business thinking about that. It was a whole nother story for a whole nother day. <laughs> sure, not that and, and, you know, that's what I said about me and my cousin earlier about some of the things that in our early like our childhood and stuff like that. So sure. it invested me, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that was uh the walk was one of the things that kind of built our relationship and wanting me to know who God was and see God. Um and I saw I saw God. I saw a lot of Christ in him. And I love that, you know, I thought that was pretty nice and pretty genuine. That doesn't say that I fall for anybody that I saw Christ in because right. there's still things I had to, you know, I, and I was I was getting to that point of um starting to care about who God was, if that makes sense. Or not starting to care about who God was, excuse me. I was getting to that point where I was starting to care about um the opposite sex in a sense. Sure. Um, you know, because I'm growing up, I'm a teenager, I think we're now maybe not maybe sophomores in high school um i'm a sophomore he was he's a little older than me so he probably was in his senior year at the time but we met when he was i think in his junior year um i could i could i could could be getting all that wrong but i still hope (laughs) (laughs) but anyways he um he one day we're walking home from school and i just just saw the little the light (laughs) (laughs) i saw the light and a a crush on my end not his end on my end begins to build and he again was very adamant about setting that boundary for making their heart right? Very stern and very strict about that. And so I kept my person myself, okay, for a long time. And you know, and then I met his girlfriend, I think. I think he had a girlfriend <laughs> yeah. that I knew nothing about, okay. <laughs> because our relationship was so much about God. Oh, yeah, I never even it. I never even thought about it, I knew he was off the ass, like you know, he, he never brought it up and I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I met his girlfriend. Um, and then, you know, that that relationship ended and I start it started to be a thing at school where people were saying that we look good together and they're really shipping us together. They're really trying and to like okay. yeah, they're really trying to connect us together. And 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 I took that as an opportunity. I was like, okay, great, I'm gonna I'm going to use that as a segue to ask him, like, hey, what do you think about that? You know, and that's what I did. I was like, one day we were walking home from school. And I did it early on in the walk. Like, not early. I did it midway. I had, I had a plan. I did it midway in the walk so that the rest of the walk, it was kind of like if I did get rejected, then, you know, I could kind of stay face and just like, oh, okay, it's fine. Just be friends. You know, <laughs> just keep being friends. It's all good. You know, and <laughs> so anyways, um, you know, I said I had a plan, but I, I didn't really, I'm joking when I said I had a plan, but that's, that's what happened. And so I took that opportunity. I was like, Hey, did you hear what they said in the hallway about me and you looking good together and, you know, being, you know, more than friends? What do you think about that? And he was like, uh, he gave me this line that was like, not the first time I heard it, but it was like one of those lines. I was like, that's so good. That's just one of those lines. It's like, it's like one of those lines people say like, hey, it's you, not me. Okay, <laughs> so he, but it was his was a his was a his was, his was biblical. He said, honestly, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. I just want to pursue that. Yeah. And I was like, how can how can you? I I respect that. You know, like that. Right. I respected that, and I was like, okay, all right. And then you know, I took my little break stuff. You know, <laughs> kept walking, and then we went our separate ways. You know, I went home, we went home, and I just dealt with that rejection. But we still we still kept being friends. But I think. After he learned that I had things for him, he kind of opened up a little bit later. Not soon, but later. Um, he opened up a little bit and, you know, he started kind of flirting with me. And I was like, nah. This is different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I was just what? So he started kind of flirting with me. And, you know, I was like, hmm. Okay. I noted it. Kept silent. And then said, and I kind of was like, let's see if he does it again. He did it again. And then I, I put my foot down and I was like, you know what? If you do that again, we're dating. Because I was not back to be out here playing no games. I learned that, you know, you don't really, you know, you don't get into relationships. You want to protect your heart. Right. You get into relationships without knowing the intention of where the relationship is going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so I wasn't about that, you know, starting for a long time, talking, phase, or business. I wasn't doing that. You know, I let him know straight up, but if you do that again, we're together. And he did. 
and we ended up being together. <laughs> and so, um, secretly at first, because you know, my no, you can tell mom, yeah, no, absolutely not. No. My mom, I, I think, um, yeah, I think he was a senior at the time, and I probably was a sophomore, like yeah. middle, middle of the year, or something like that. Yeah. So, that's how we came to go from friendship to romantic. Okay, just answer your question. I appreciate you giving your insight of the story because, um, of course, as this what was happening, say? I don't remember. I don't think it's my story to tell. I think it's his story, but I do. I do remember. Uh, first and foremost, so much transition was happening um, in Luke's life. You know, his interest in the Lord, uh, his interest in what we share the gospel, as well as his interest and in, actually his lack of interest in women. In, in that sense, uh, you know, I remember in high school he had. He had multiple girlfriends uh, here and there, but when he came to know the Lord, Jesus was the focus. Jesus was all that he wanted. And I remember particularly, we had this conversation where, um, again, the girl that he was with, um, she didn't love Jesus. She wasn't about Jesus. And that relationship ended. And I wonder if it's the same relationship you're referring to. But And so that statement that he gave you, although it's cliche, I feel like I never used that. I've used that before when either I'm not interested in someone or I'm really just not interested in relationships at all. Or, hey, like, I'm really not looking for a relationship. I'm really pursuing the Lord. Like, that's the season that I'm in. I think that's a fair statement to give someone, provided that you're really not interested or you're really truly pursuing the Lord. Yeah, I wasn't knocking him for that. I, I agree with you. Yeah. And yeah, I think that was definitely true, as it's I, I, as it would seem, but I think there was interest there for sure if he was flirting with you and subsequently that, that flourish into a relationship. No, he definitely had a crush on me. Because <laughs> we're married now. He thought, this is a part of his story. I've heard him tell people, you know, because they'll, they'll say they, they want to get his side of the story, and I've heard him tell people, he'll say, yeah, I didn't like her. <laughs> people are like, she had a crush on me, she called me around like a little bird, and I'm yeah. like, excuse me, you definitely like me, sir. So he was put on this whole side. Like he didn't like me, but I believe that he liked me. Of course, you know, we we talked about you as well too. Okay, uh, so there you go. I'm the best friend. Now you know. So fast forward, so you guys were married. Um, so fast forward, yeah, let's pause. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question about marriage. I, right. Yes. Let me rephrase it. And so that's right. You guys are married now um, for some years, and you can share with us if you don't mind. Uh, I wanted to ask, what's what's that been like for you? Um, how has the gift of marriage. How has the Lord used the gift of marriage to grow you, to mature you? What are some things that you have learned and would like to share with the viewers? Yeah. Well, we've been together for seven years, maybe six. Don't quote me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just off the top of my head, I think seven years. Um, we've known each other much longer than that. But that's how long we've been married. And so, um, I think, I think that he's, I think that the relationship having to like live with someone having to not be on your own time sometimes, having to, you know, cater to the other person, because really um, that's something that, that you do in marriage. You, it's not about just you. Um, and even like, uh, if you talk about the marriage bed, there's a verse that says that your your body is not your own, right? And that you submit to your husband, I'm outside of the marriage bed now, but you submit to your husband and likewise he submits to you, right? And so that all comes together in a way, um, and I think has grown me in the sense that before, um, and we come and our, we have to think about our, our, our differences too when we come together. So and those differences don't necessarily go away once you get married. Mm -hmm. And so things like him being an only child to now being an old child, me being the baby of the family and having multiple siblings, right? And growing up in that type of, type of environment kind of played a role I think, in how our personalities were. And um, I think we learn from each other in that sense. Okay. Um, but, you know, those are the only examples that I have. That was one of the easiest examples I could pull out from the top of my head. Sure. Where, and, and not only that, but we, even though we might have shared, shared the same culture, it was still expressed by our family differently. Nuances. Yeah. So those type of things um, and those expressions really poured out into me together and away from the world. And it was just us. You know, sometimes that brought, like, you know, great moments. Um, or we really knew how to serve each other well. We really knew how to love each other well. Um, and other times, it just it did it because yeah. we didn't know we we didn't know how you know to yeah. do those those two things. Um, and so um, you know that's what I would say for um, just some of the things that we like we see in marriage. How has it grown me? I think you asked, um, or what I've learned. Yeah. Um, 
remember that relationship aspect I was talking about before, just like friendship type of thing and the level of intimacy in a relationship, that also didn't necessarily go away um, once I got married. Um, and I think it challenged me a bit. I think he challenged me a bit and just, you know, really kind of, because he's, he's a more extroverted sure. person than I am, much more. <laughs> and so he really pushed me in the sense of um, trying to, you know, kind of get out there. He really pushed me in, in especially when he's sharing the word of God and discipling, you know, other people and like doing that type of, that type of relationship. Those are intimate, those can be intimate relationships to have. And for me, I wasn't resistant to it, but it wasn't my natural inclination. Yeah. And so that was something from, again, cultural things that we kind of grew up with and like just our personality differences that really came together. And I remember he kind of be upset with me sometimes where he was like, this is this is a calling. You have to do this. You know, and I'm like, uh, but you're better at it. Than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're better at it than I am. So, you know, you just do that part. And, you know, when you kind of, <laughs> Need a woman to kind of chime in, then I'll, you know, but he's like, that's not going to work, you know, because um, you did, you did, you know, fulfill the command that God calls us to, you know, be fishers and men like that. And so, um, you know, but I think we've kind of learned and grew up, like grown in the sense that we've learned that the different expressions and the different gifts that God provides yeah. and learning to, how would I say this, learning to, I guess it's support and nurture each other in those things. Um, so it's my gift is encouragement. It made me feel, you know, asking this last time I called a friend and I'm not how they were doing. And, you know, um, how I'm supporting that friend right now or things like that. Like those little things that you do. And then for me, I would probably, you know, just kind of help them to remember that everyone can be your best friend. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's everything like that where it's like you need to kind of draw lines and boundaries to remember you, like your first ministry is your family. Um, so, you know, and I, and I don't know if everyone would agree with that, but for us, there's a certain dynamic. For us, there was just a certain dynamic that we had to kind of learn because he came from being an event, he's an evangelist, okay? He came from being that, and I didn't want to stifle that gift and stifle that thing that God had put in him. Right, through, or be a hindrance. Or be a hindrance yeah. to that, or something block, or whatever you, you call it. Um, but at the same time, I, I didn't, I didn't have, I, I, I wasn't out there doing it as much or as passionate about it as he was, as much as I was able to be a very good encouragement to him. I saw friends, you know, feeling down or, you know, needed to just, you know, be challenged or help the or something. I was better at those things than, you know, necessarily putting myself out there, especially because, you know, like I said, I was used to people approaching me. So right. you know, people would come to me and tell me their problems and, and say, like, you know, this is what I'm going through. You pray for me. I would say, you know what? I definitely will be praying for you. But then I would maybe send them a scripture, you know, that helped encourage them. And that was something that, you know, I learned um, through the resources that he gave me. Yeah. Right. And just so, so doing certain things like that and like really um, recognizing our differences and supporting each other in our differences in that sense, you know, but yeah. also being able to take those differences and come together and do something for the glory of God. What are some things that you can share with our viewers that would help them to be a witness for Jesus? Uh, in yeah. Um, well, I would say that one of my, one of the things that I've learned is that, especially going back to the previous question that you just asked me about my marriage and uh, waiting to learn our Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that witnessing doesn't just have to happen with adults. It can also happen with kids, but my particular, you know, instance of how God, you know, he knows me, how he found me, and, 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 right? And, um, uh, I think that I, through God, have been able to kind of build the courage to help, you know, some children to understand who he is and his nature, you know, his good nature. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, really kind of, you know, share that light in that sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's making sense to you, but for me, it's just something like interacting with you know, a kid and being, you know, a light to them in some way, you okay. know, or sharing a little bit, like for, I'll give you an example of my nieces and nephews, you know, if they, if they come to me with something about what society is 
you know, that may be against or, you know, you know, away from the word of God and the principles of God, I'm able to have conversation with them to say, well, this is what God says, yeah. you know, um, and then, you know, likewise with like any other child, like maybe my children ministry or my church, like having a conversation and saying like, you know, this is what the Bible says, they have a question or something like that. Yeah. Um, I've learned these different expressions um, in that sense uh, of who can receive what God has for them. Um, but also, um, I've been able to do through God, <laughs> because none of these things like were as easy to me as I thought. Like these children, I thought would be so easy for me. But sometimes I'm like, kids ask me deep questions sometimes, you know. And so, trying to you know use scripture to have them understand that isn't always an easy, thing to do, you know. Yeah. But when they come back and they say something like, you know, you're right. I once heard my mom or my dad say that, or you know, I went to school and I told them what you told me and such and such. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. And, you know, they tell me the reactions, they tell me what they, you know, what they got out of that experience. That's, you know, I think a win for Christ and, and bringing glory yeah, for Christ. Absolutely. Um, and right. so, but for me, the, uh, a high for me is, you know, having a child come back to me, being able to say something like that to me. You're like, you know, this is what I got out of this experience and this is what, um, you know, what you taught me was true. And then, you know, kind of seeing that, play out in their lives a little bit, like, like planting a seed, uh, you know, I think would be the highest for me is being able to see God do that in someone's life, yeah. whether it's a child or whoever, yeah. you know, because maybe I'm not the one, like my husband might be, you know, like right. Shepherd, right? maybe I'm just the one that comes along and plants the seed and, you know, maybe I'm the only Bible that someone sees, you know, through my actions and my words, using scripture, right, and maybe not with God, and so that, those would be my highs with God. Um, I will say one of Specifically, one high for me was when I found out my mom got saved. Oh, that for me was high because I remember the struggle. The struggle it was to really kind of like come out of the Catholic Church and you know go some or that specific Catholic Church, not you know Catholic Church overall, but that specific Catholic Church where it was really there was no life there, right? Um, and having to go through that with Christ, that was a high for me. Um, and then also. Um, I, I always have a high with God whenever I have what I would call an aha moment. Yeah. Um, so anytime I get like a, a nugget or that turns into this big piece of meat that I can chew on and I, I can chew through it and, you know, gain something to the point where I'm able to pour out into someone to plant a seed, that's a, that's a high for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, lows with God. Um, I would say the victory sometimes would be my low, um, where I just, I don't know. Like if I'm going through something and I don't understand why God's put me in the place to go through that thing, mm. and and I feel like I'm not hearing from Him in prayer, yeah. I feel like He's not answering. Those would be my lows with God. I'm like, God, where are you? And what's in here? You know, or or if I am hearing from Him, I want to know what's in picture. Like, what's the big picture? You know, um, how does this, how does this, and how is this actually for me? Or because maybe sometimes I can see that right away. You know, um, but I'll see it later, and I will bring on a hot moment. Yeah. Like earlier, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, so basically anything with kids in God is a high is a high for me. It's a highlight for me. Um because I just think it's amazing being able to see them learn and grow. Being able to see them learn and grow in principles and the knowledge of God is, is a, a great thing that I think will bring glory to God for generations to come. And mm -hmm. so there's that and you know, her mom was high, her getting saved, even though we're still working out some of the remnants you know, to this day as I am to this day. Um and Lowe's just the ambiguity and not knowing what what God is doing sometimes and you know why he's allowing me to go through what I'm going through. I heard my husband say earlier when he said he, you know, saw a man in the hospital who had, you know, something, you know, medical going on. It was one of those one of those things where, you know, you just you don't wish anybody to go through. Yeah. And he said that in that moment, in moments like that, he sees, you know, certain people with hospitals and things like that who are going through it going through, he wonders why why God did he allow this person to be in that hope in that particular body. How is that bringing you glory? You know, and so things like that is what I mean when I say sometimes I can't see the big picture. Like my husband can, you know, he, he knows that there is glory coming out of it. We know yeah. that right so yeah. faith is the evidence of things unseen, you know, things so he knows that there's some glory coming out of it. We have faith that God is getting bored out of this somehow but sometimes those points where you just you can't hear it or there's mystery happening it's like god what you want me to piece something together 
and I don't know what it is, you know, or, you know, things like that. So those would be my lows that I, I would say that I have about from time to time. Yeah, thank you so much, Wendy, uh, just for uh, sharing with us uh, those highs as well as those lows. And I, too, share similar sentiments as well, too, uh, the ambiguity sometimes. And, you know, sometimes as we read, as we read scripture, I think of the story of Job and uh, just uh, suffering that he went through and the questions that he was asking God as well. Sometimes as the reader, you're able to flip the pages and get to the conclusion. You get to see how the story ends and you're like, oh, OK, this makes sense. But in our day-to-day -day life, we don't have that power. We don't have that prerogative to skip forward to see how things end. And I think it really reminds us the need to um, trust the Lord, to surrender, um, as well as to recognize that um, in his sovereignty and his divine in his divine providence, um, he's working all things somehow for good, as scripture tells us. But it doesn't discount. Um, the fact that he invites us to reason with him, he invites us to pour out our hearts before him in prayer when those uncertainties are there, and he invites us to believe and to trust. And a question that I often ask myself when I do have those existential questions, why is there so much suffering? Why does this happen? Why does that happen to this person? It's a simple question that uh, I often will ask is, um, why did Jesus have to suffer? Like, why, why not? Why him? why not me, right? And it just brings me back in the right perspective. Um, and that is that Jesus took upon my sins and your sins and uh, suffered the suffering that you and I, we should have suffered. He took upon himself the punishment that you and I, we deserve so that we might become the righteousness of God. And so I think back to the cross, when I don't understand why, um, things are happening in my life, or why someone else that I love, they're going through suffering, and I don't have the answer. I look at the cross, and when I look at the cross, I see an answer, and that answer is love. And love tells me that God will work it out. Love shows me that on the cross, love was shown to me, and I think that's where I go to. It doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't make everything okay, but it gives me some sort of assurance and peace. Um, that God will work all things for my God. And that gives me the strength and power um, to continue to witness, especially when I don't have the answers. And so thank you so much, Wendy, for sharing your time with us, for sharing your story with us and your testimony. And um, I hope you as a listener and viewer, her story encouraged you to be a witness and trust God in your life and what he's doing. And in many ways, uh, you would share your stories with others as well, too, so that they would come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so, guys, if you have not already done so, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'll have more episodes to come, more friends of mine that will be sharing their stories and uh, some other things that the Lord has placed on my heart. And so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, okay, we'll talk. Bye-bye.